Parker Valby. Oh my God. We made a big deal when she ran 1858 at the Texas AM Invitational, wondering if the course was short. And she goes to the ACC Championships and the drops ACC Championships. Drops a 1825.9. Whoa. What's run now comes Jonathan Kel- K- Kellogg is saying he thinks Valby could run low 1440s in the 5 day right now. Do we have another American star, essentially? 1440 U.S. ranks right now, you're a star. You're not a world beater, but that's the discussion. I think we do well then. This, is, this hype train is picking up steam by January, February, the outdoor season. This could be one of the most hyped women ever to come out of the NCAA system. I don't think that's hyperbole. I also don't think she's a lot to win the NCAA title this year in cross country. We'll get to that. But she split 15-24 for 5K in this cross country race. Now, we can debate how accurate these courses are. I texted the coach at Ole Miss, Adam Smith. I asked him, how accurate is that course? He said it's pretty accurate. So he thinks the times are fairly legitimate. But if it's true, she came through 5K in 1524, and then she actually picked it up for the last kilometer, 301, to run 1825. Now, the times were fast across the board here. We should note that Mercy Chellengart of Alabama, she ran 1833. Third place, Hilda Alamomoy of Alabama, 1854. So three women were under 19 minutes. Usually you don't see pretty much anyone under 19 minutes, but this was a phenomenal performance, Robert. It was. I watched it live. When I didn't make the bus or the train or whatever, I was taking to New York. Came to the office. I'm like, which one do I want to race? I was like, I want to see Volby. So I got it. And plus, that was easier to watch. I got it on the SEC network, which is on YouTube TV. And <clears throat> I mean, within the first five minutes, she breaks away from the other Alabama girls, except for Chell and God. I'm like, wow, she's going for broke here. And then within the first 10 minutes, she's clear. Of Chellingot. Now she didn't build on that lead that much. So, you know, we, we do need to point out Chellingot was like what eight or nine seconds back. But the splits were crazy. And then the question is normally, Michael, well, are they short? Whatever. But if you look at the times, John Kellogg analyzed this, like he's like, normally you can run for 6K cross country pretty similar to what you can run for 10K on the track, that pace. And, you know, if you look at the men's times, they all convert to like 28 minute low guys. And that's what they are, all 28 minute low guys. And in this race, if you're doubting the times, like the 10th or 11th placer, we looked it up. She's a 16 flat woman. Valby beat her by 95 seconds. So that would be like 79 seconds in a 5K. And there's other times. We're not just going off one time that, that pro- projects to this. We're looking at the pace. We're looking at the other people's PBs. And it all says well under 15 minutes, potentially low 1440s, which is mind-boggling considering that 1501 is the collegiate record. But look at that. 1501 is the collegiate record. It's been there for 13 years. It was run in the pre super share era, and it was run by a woman, Jenny Simpson, who's really a 1500 meter runner, not a 5000 meter runner. So, should someone certainly be under 15 now, 13 years later? Yes. If they go for it, a lot of collegians don't set up the 5Ks, whatever. I think somebody will 100% break 15 this year, and it wouldn't surprise me to see us up for, uh, in the 1440s. One other stat that you came up with, John, I think it was you, it's in the notes here. The woman that Volby beat at Texas AM. A mo- uh, two weeks ago, by more than a minute, Addie Ingle of Ohio State. Oh, she's some scrub. She's never been an All-American. Guess what? She won the Big Ten meet today. So, Volby's beating people who are conference champions and major Power Five conferences by more than a minute. So, Volby's incredible. I think Chilonga's really good, too. And now let's get to the caveat in the room. Why she may not win? Because she may not be the best girl in the NCAA because Caitlin Tui is damn good, too. Yeah, remember the last time Parker Valby raced Caitlin Tui was at the NCAA Championships on the track in June. Caitlin Tui won that race. Caitlin Tui has shown so far she's a better kicker. I think Parker Valby, remember she was pushing quite a lot in that race, but could not break Caitlin Tui. And I think what we're going to see, you know, we'll be talking about this a lot in the next three weeks because it's going to be one of the most heavily anticipated head to head showdowns we've had at NCAA Cross for a number of years, but 
Caitlin Tui versus Parker Valby, Caitlin Tui has yet to get out of about third gear in a race this year. She's been under control all three of her victories. At Notre Dame, she pulled away from Chelengart, put 12 seconds on her over the last kilometer. At Nuttycomb, same thing. She waited till about 1,200 to go, cruised into the victory. And today, the ACC meet, she breaks away with Kelsey Camille, her teammate, and then she ends up winning that fairly comfortably as well. So that's three races, three victories, and really she wasn't challenged at all in any of them. And I think what we're going to see at the national championships is the onus will be on Parker Valby to break away from Caitlin Tui. If she can do it, she'll win the national title. And if she won't, I think Tui will be able to run her down uh, at the end of the race. And the other thing to note is the course is going to be a lot tougher at NCAAs. Valby so far has run two very fast, very easy courses at Texas A&M and Ole Miss today at SECs. Tui, I think, based on her skill set, I kind of view her as a little bit better at a, a tougher course like Oklahoma State. But we'll see. Just because Valby's only run flat courses this year doesn't mean she's going to be suddenly failing on a hilly course. So that's one other thing to throw into the calculus. I think maybe it'll be harder to break away on a hilly course like that. But actually, I'm not sure about that. But yeah, I can't, I can't wait to watch that race. Well, I think the big thing when you're comparing Tui to her is Tui beat Challenge God by more. All in 1K this year. I mean, this fall, which is impressive. And then I'm not ruling out a third person for winning this meet. Big 12 champion. John, help me pronounce her first name. It's not Celia, is it? It's, it's Kaylee McCabe. Thank you for asking for help, Robert. Yes, you got to learn how to pronounce that because she's going to be a factor as well. But it's spelled, even though it's Kaylee, which you think would be K-A-Y-L-E-E. -E, it is C-E-I-L-I. So Kaylee McCabe is undefeated on the year. She has a big kick. Huge kick. If you want, I don't know, Robert, did you see any of the footage of the Big 12 meet today? Because she was running with OK State's lead trio of Taylor Rowe, the NCAA 3K champion, Bilicep Karui, and Natalie Cook. And I was watching some of the race. I flipped over to do something else. I flipped back, and it's just McCabe sprinting. Like She moved faster at the end of that race than I saw any woman run for any portion of any race today. It was incredible, her sprinting form. She won that thing fairly comfortably in the end. She put, well, actually, it was only two seconds on Kate Taylor Rowe, but she was moving. So I agree with you. Kayla McCabe, remember, she won the Nuttycomb meet last year. She was third in NCAA Cross in 2021. I think that Valby and Tui are on a different level based on what they've done on the track. But, uh, yeah, if she's right there with them with 800 to go, I wouldn't be shocked to see her beat them. I just don't see her winning. I guess, John, if they all sit there and she kicks. A kick's a beautiful thing. But she wins this meet today. I didn't see it. I guess this shows why things are, you know, you still get results. Or no, she wins by 2.4 seconds. But she's seven seconds up of the third place here. So maybe, you know, all of that's at the end. If you see the race, you really could see how impressive it is. But it sounds like it's sort of going to be the maybe the tale of different strategies, right? Volby's got to drop people. Tui just wants to sort of hang there to the end and has a better chance of doing it. And then if McCabe can do it, like, look out. Like, but it's going to be a really test for her to hang on. So I think the great thing is just the level that we're seeing at the NCAAs now, the times. I mean, times in cross country themselves don't mean anything, but it points to women being able to run 1440s. That's what we need. The bar has changed internationally. We need to see the U.S. people catching up. Robert hates on me harping that, but uh, it's, you know, one of the things we've been able to count on is the U.S. women being pretty competitive in the distances, even on the track. And uh, I was wondering if the train left the station. Hopefully it hasn't because you need to be running 1440s in college if you're going to run, you know, 1420s, 1410s, 14 minutes. I mean, that's where it's going to be soon. We're going to see a sub-14 very soon. Yeah. Well, the, the level in the NCAA on the women's side, undoubtedly much higher than it was two years ago in cross-country. Because remember, the champion 
of the 2020 meet, which was held in March 2021, was Mercy Challenger of Alabama. She's not any worse than she was right in that season. She's actually probably better. She won the NCAA 10K title in June. She ran 18.33 today. It's not like she ran poorly. She's still very, very fit. It's just everyone else has raised their game. So now she's running at a higher level, but so are multiple other athletes who are even better than her at the moment. It's pretty incredible. In terms of international competitiveness, I mean, one of the things when we were trying to analyze these times here in the office, John Kellogg was talking about like Sally Kipiego was capable of these type of times. Now, Sally Kipiego, of course, ended up winning an Olympic silver medal. I would think that, I think that women's running as a whole has gotten more competitive as Africa is getting less and less sexist over the last 10 to 20 years. So we can worry about her Olympic prospects later. 